Northern Ireland might not be the first country that you think of when it comes to football, but it would certainly be the second just after Brazil. So let's check out the stadiums of the NIFL Premiership. The Showgrounds, Bellamini United. This 120 year old venue underwent a major redevelopment throughout the 2000s. And as a result, it is now not only an all seater, but all of those seats are undercover, which I'd imagine comes in handy in this part of the world. As you may have noticed, there is a track around the field, but it's not a running track. Up until a few years ago, the ground was used as a stock car venue. I believe there have been plans drawn up to place a matching stand at either end and transform it into a football specific stadium. But for now, they're stuck back behind the stock track. Lockshaw Leisure Arena, Carrick Rangers. This might seem quite basic compared to the last one. The main stand is a little antiquated, there are some obstructive views within. But at least after the addition of some new black and amber seats and a lick of paint, it does look rather nice. But yeah, two sides of the field are bordered by uncovered flat areas of tarmac, where a good chunk of the capacity is coming from people just standing around the perimeter. So it is still a basic stadium. Solitude. I like that name. Although solitude isn't really an accurate description of one's typical stadium experience. It's home to Cliftonville, who are apparently the oldest football club on the island of Ireland. It's a pretty old ground as well, having opened in 1890. I think that makes it the oldest football ground in Northern Ireland. Its main claim to fame, however, is being the site of the first ever penalty in international football. It was a failed Penenka attempt, if you can believe it. No, that would have probably got you hanged, drawn and quartered back in those days. Interesting ground. The Showgrounds, Colerain. Well, the name of the ground might be the same as the one we saw earlier, but what certainly aren't the same are the two sides of the stadium, which couldn't be any more different. The main stand has bright blue seating sheltered by an especially large roof, but over on the southern side there is a big grey open concrete terrace, which looks about as hospitable as a, a Guatemalan prison. The club does plan on giving this place a bit of a renovation, which would see a proper stand on all four sides of the ground. But for now, the inequality is rife. Sea View, Crusaders. This is another ground with a simple yet great name. Short and sweet. Can you actually view the sea though? Well, you can see the cranes of the port, so I guess that's close enough. The main stand at this ground is quite steep and is elevated significantly, which puts spectators in a good position to view what actually matters, that being the field of course. Would have been nice if you could see the sea as well though. Other than that, I'm liking the striking red, black and white colour scheme throughout. Stangmore Park, Dungannon Swifts. Although in these shots you are seeing a natural grass pitch, they have recently had to change over to synthetic due to major issues they've had in the past with their pitch. It's a little surprising to hear that the pitch wasn't pristine given that the first four letters of Dungannon spells dung, a natural fertilizer. On second thought, the first four letters of a name aren't necessarily indicative of something substance. If that were the case, nobody would be eating shiitake mushrooms, I'll tell you that much. Other than that, it's a solid little ground, I suppose. Mornview Park, Glenavon, Swirly, Swirly. That was strange. I guess that's why they say keep off the grass. This stadium has had a bit of a tumultuous past, suffering from consistent vandalism. But you wouldn't know it just by looking at it. Although simple, the ground does look pretty tidy. One thing that sticks out like a sore thumb is a rather large sign that says, Life without Jesus makes no sense. Which is not what you think, it's actually promoting the latest single by the a cappella group Tyrone and the McNuggets. Life without a 
Jesus makes no sense. Life without Jesus makes no sense. What in the actual f was that? The Oval, Glen Torrent. The good thing about a name like the Oval is that it's not only simple once again, but it can be educational for simpletons like myself. Because I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but I always thought an Oval was like this, with curves. But no, it's like this, straight edges. Did not know that. Anyway, it's an old ground with a storied history, including being damaged during the Blitz, Belfast edition. The facilities aren't great, but I kind of like the slightly run-down look, especially when combined with the industrial backdrop. However, clearly it's not good enough for a modern-day first-tier football club, and the ground is set to be given a major renovation in the near future. Inver Park, Lahn. The surrounds of this ground are anything but industrial. It's quite pretty, in fact. Could you somebody in the comments telling me there's a steel foundry next door or something? The ground has had a new stand built at the western end and another one just a couple of years ago was erected in front of the church at the eastern end. No such advancements have been made on the northern side, but I quite like a bit of a tree-lined perimeter. If you've seen some of the other videos on this channel you probably could have guessed that. There's also a little stream back there. Windsor Park, Linfield. This is the biggest stadium in Northern Ireland, and although it's not huge by world standards, for a country of 2 million, it's pretty impressive. Not to belittle Linfield, but I'd imagine the capacity is this size largely due to it being the home of the national football team. Linfield's average attendance is not even close to capacity. The stadium originally opened way back in 1903 but basically became what it is today in 2015, when it was mostly rebuilt. You can spot the one stand that remains from the pre-2015 rebuild, but they've done pretty well to blend it all together, and it basically does look like a brand new stadium. Lakeview Park, Loch Goal. Just like at Seaview, I'm not sure you can actually see a lake from Lakeview Park. But it is very close to the lake that Loch Gull is named after, so perhaps you could see it at one point. Loch Gull, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, is just a tiny village, so they've done well to get to the first tier. And although the capacity is small, it can nearly fit the village's population within it five times over. Considering that, the ground is rather impressive. And once more, there have been plans drawn up to approve upon it further. Uh, is that the showgrounds? Newry City. I mentioned the surrounds of a couple of stadiums in this video, and this place is without a doubt the loser. It's situated in an industrial estate, but that's not the bad part. There are open air tanks of sewage that are 40 meters from the field. That's the sewage treatment plant next door. The stadium was here first, to be fair. It is exactly 100 years old. And there has been a new city here since the beginning, however this new city is a phoenix club that was formed 10 years ago. It is a nice little ground. So there you have it. I am going to choose the boring, obvious option for my favourite. There's just a bit of a chasm between this and the others when it comes to the amenities. If you enjoyed the video, I have discussed it with my team of advisors and we recommend that subscribing would be the most sensible option going forward. Uh, thanks for watching, have a good one.